Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to stream level two data using the Charles Schwab API. And this will be specifically for options. Now you can also get level two data for stocks, but I believe these are only limited to NASDAQ and NYSE. So I believe we are not able to see the whole order book. And the process that I will go over in this tutorial can be applied for the stocks as well. Now the script on your screen is a collection of functions that I use anytime I want access to this API. When I source this script, it'll load up all of these functions along with my access token, which I can use some of these functions to refresh. But as long as you have some sort of script where you can continuously call your current access token, you'll be okay. And what we need from the script is to get the streamer information. And for that, I have a function called get user preferences. And we have no parameters here. All we're doing is sending a get request to the API via this URL. Again, passing along our current access token. And if that's successful, it'll return a table with the streamer information and our accounts. Otherwise, it'll just print an error message stating the error. And most of the time, since we have no parameters, it'll be because of the access token not being current. So once you have that, we can go to the second script. Now in here, I have some functions specifically for the streamer. So in line 16 is where I source my functions for the trader API. And in line 18 is where I run the get user preferences function and get the streamer info. We have to build two JSON blocks, one to log in and the other to log out, which will let Schwab know that we wanna make a request if we're logging in to stream and when we want to log out or close the streamer. Now the way these are set up are two JSON blocks. So to log in, we need to pass in a request ID, which is a random number. The service will be admin. The command will be to log in. For the customer and coral ID, these are just pulling from the streamer info. And for the parameters, we need to pass in our current access token and for for the client channel and the function ID. Again, these are pulling from the streamer info. Now to log out, we just change the command to log out. And for this block, we don't need to pass in any parameters. Now, similarly, we need to pass in a JSON block to let Schwab know that we want level two data. And for that, I have built a function where we pass in the service. So it'll be either NYC book, NASDAQ book, or options book, along with the symbol or symbols as a vector. The command can be subs, unsubs, add, or view. So if we open up this function, if it's only one symbol, it'll return that symbol. Otherwise, it'll create one long string with all your symbols separated by a comma. And then we build our JSON block. So similar to the login and logout blocks, we need to pass in our request ID, the service, the command, the customer and coral ID. And for the parameters, we pass in all of our symbols for the keys. And for the fields, we're gonna return all four. Once we have this JSON block, this function will go ahead and return it. Now, the way the streamer is set up is that for each incoming message we get back from the streamer, we're gonna dump all those messages into a folder, which we will then reformat and return as a data frame so that we can work with the data in our studio. So we have a separate function with no parameters. And what this function will do is it'll go ahead and list all the files inside of our folder, process all the messages, and return it back as a data frame. For each of the files inside of our folder, it's gonna go ahead and try and read them in. If that file has data, we wanna go ahead and extract the content. Otherwise, if the message doesn't have any data, we're just gonna go ahead and remove that message. So that next time we run this function, it'll just go ahead and process the files that we do have data for. The way that the API returns the messages is a little complex. We begin by passing in the message from the API and going through each unique key or symbol. We're gonna begin by formatting the trade time if it's available and reformatting the column name. We also need to separate the bid and the ask and format those messages separately. So these will be lists within lists. So if the bids are available, we're gonna go ahead and return that as a data frame as the bid. Now within this bid, we have another list, but first we're gonna go ahead and rename the column names for these three columns, which are price, aggregate size, and market makers. So depending on the option that you wanna stream, you can have multiple market makers for a particular price. So we need to make sure that all the data gets extracted for all the market makers. And for all the unique market makers, we're gonna extract that separately and return that as a data frame. Now that we have it as a data frame, we can go ahead and rename the column names which are the market maker ID, the market maker size, and the quote time, and the quote time is in milliseconds. So we're gonna be returning that as a data frame. So within this block, we're just gonna extract all the market makers for a particular price, and we're gonna combine that with all the bid information and return that as a data frame. We're gonna drop the column with the list. We're gonna add a column instead with the side, which will be for the bid, and finally return that as a data frame. Similarly, for the ask, we're gonna be returning the same thing where we go through each list. We're gonna return 
return the ask as a data frame, rename the columns, extract the pricing information for the market makers. And finally, once you have formatted the bid and the ask, we can go ahead and combine both. We're going to reformat our timestamps and make them more specific. Since if you recall for the market maker quote time, these are in milliseconds. So it'll return timestamps down to six decimals for both the trade time and the quote time. And finally, after it has gone through and cleaned up all the data, we're going to roll bind all of our results and that's what gets returned in this function. Once we have both of those functions, we can go to our third script. And for this one, it's gonna create a level two dump folder inside of your working directory if the path doesn't exist already, along with calling all of our functions from our previous script. We're going to establish a connection via this WebSocket, and the URL is provided inside of the streamer info. We're going to go ahead and connect, and for each of the messages, we're just going to save these as RDS files inside of our folder via a unique timestamp. Otherwise, the data will get overwritten. Now, when the WebSocket connects, we want to make sure we send our JSON block with our credentials. Similarly, when it closes, we want to make sure we send our logout block. Now we're going to go ahead and create some symbols to stream the level two data. So these will be for spy. The expiration will be 530. I want both the calls and the puts for these three strikes. We're going to pass that into our second function. The service will be options book and we want to subscribe. Now we're going to wait five seconds to make sure our streamer is connected. And if it is, we're going to send our level two JSON block. We can also add to our subscription. So that's what I'm going to be doing in line 53 through 55. Where I'm going to add the queues, same expiration, and I'm going to add the 510 call strike and here the command will be add. So let's run everything through line 56. So inside of your working directory, you should see the level two dump folder. And if you open that up, you will see messages coming in. Now we're gonna use our second function that we built in the previous script to pull all the data into a single data frame. So if we run that and we take a look at all data, this is what the data will look like. So we have the key or the symbol, the trade time, price, the aggregate size, the number of market makers, the market maker ID, the market maker size, the market maker quote time, and which side it's on. So as an example on how to read the data for the first 15 rows, it's all pertaining to the same symbol. So we see that the aggregate size is 1415. We have 15 market makers. That's why we have 15 rows. Now to see the specific size for each of these market makers, we would go to the market maker size. Now if you add up all of the contracts in this particular column, they should add up to 1415. And here you can see the last update that they made and what side they were on. So this was for the bid. And we could search for the queues as well since we added that later. And we see that the option is in there as well. So if we close out of this, we see that we have 10,900 entries. We can always go ahead and rerun line 61 to get new information. And if we look at all data again, now we have five times more data. So the streamer will run in the background and whenever you need to close it out, you can just run line 65 through 69. And after you run that, you will stop receiving new messages, but you will still have access to your level two dump folder. And that's pretty much it guys for level two data on options. Now in my next tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to combine services. And more specifically, I want to return both level one and level two data at the same time. So stay tuned for that. But with that guys, this concludes the video. I'll leave a link down in the description area where you can find these three scripts. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.